I'm Henry Gilliland, the Mechatronics Specialist with Electric Supply and Equipment. In this video, I'm going to discuss integrated motion instructions. I will talk about how these instructions operate and show you standard best practices for using them. But before we get going, please be sure to subscribe to ES&E TV to view more videos like this one. Integrated motion instructions are the set of instructions that are used in Studio 5000 Logix Designer to control an axis of motion. This unique set of instructions is native to Logix Designer and can be used in ladder logic and with structured text. However, this video will focus on the use of these instructions with ladder logic. Let's start by talking about the general structure of motion instructions. For every instruction, you will assign a target axis. This means you will select an axis that already exists in the motion group that the particular instruction will control. This target axis can be a real or a virtual axis. However, in the case of a virtual axis, some instructions won't work. For instance, the MSO instruction won't work with a virtual axis of motion. It's also necessary to create a tag of type motion instruction and place that tag in the motion control field. This is the tag that the processor will use to perform the task of the given instruction. It's critical that this tag is unique for each and every motion instruction that you use. If you use the same tag for two separate instructions, then the PLC can overwrite data and read incorrect information that's stored in the tag. This can cause unpredictable behavior with the axis. As a note, I recommend that you name the tag after the instruction itself. This makes the instruction tag easier to locate if it's required to access the information stored in the tag. For instance, for an MAH instruction, you might want to create a tag of type motion instruction called axis1 underscore MAH. Next, let's take a look at the status indicator bits. The status indicator bits don't tell you anything about the axis that's being targeted. They're just diagnostics for the instruction itself. The enable bit will turn on if the rung that the instruction is on goes true. This tells you that the instruction has been enabled, but not necessarily that it's executing. The enable bit stays on as long as the rung is true. Note that all motion instructions are one shot. This means that the only time they perform any kind of task is when the enable bit transitions from false to true. In other words, Turning an instruction off will not affect the target axis in any way. The done bit turns on when the instruction has executed successfully with no errors. The done bit will only change states if the instruction is disabled and then is enabled. So when the enable bit transitions from false to true. The error bit turns on when the instruction executes with errors. The error bit will also only change states when the enable bit transitions from false to true. This means if there is an instruction error, then the error bit will stay on even if the instruction is disabled. The error bit will only reset if the instruction is re-enabled and the instruction executes without errors. A note about the error bit. Each instruction has two additional tags associated with the error bit. The .err, and the .exerr. These are integer tags that will store specific error codes when the error occurs. There is a full list of instruction error codes that can be accessed via Logix Designer. By right-clicking on an instruction and selecting Instruction Help, you can find these lists. Some instructions have unique error codes. However, if you scroll all the way to the bottom of any given Instruction Help file, you will find a link to Motion Error Codes ERR. That will provide a complete list of all the error codes that are common to all instructions. Okay, moving on. You will find that some instructions have additional status bits. The IP or in process bit and the PC or process complete bit. These bits give some more detailed information about multi-state motion instructions. When an instruction is currently running its task and controlling the target axis, the IP bit will be true. If the task finishes, then the IP bit will turn off 
and the PC bit will turn on. Lastly, with some CAM type instructions, there is one more status indicator bit, the AC or active bit. This is a camming specific bit that is set when the cam begins interpolation of the slave axis and is reset when the active cam execution is completed or canceled by a stop command, a merge, a shutdown, or a servo fault. For more information about this, you can consult the instruction help file for the instruction that you're using. When using motion instructions in ladder logic, it's usually a good idea to use sequenced logic or state machine logic that steps through the various required states of an axis. This type of sequenced programming is required with motion instructions because of the one-shot nature of the instructions. In order to automatically move through multiple states and positions, you must step through several different instructions one after the other. In cases where the axis state is dependent on a previous axis state or instruction, it's a good idea to use the status indicator bits as a condition for allowing the next step to take place. For instance, you can use the PC bit to indicate to your processor that a given instruction has completed its task and the sequence is ready to move on to the next step. However, take care when using these status bits. Newer PLC processors often scan the code so quickly that the motion instructions don't have enough time to fully execute. This is a problem in cases where the same instruction is being used multiple times as part of a sequence. It may be the case that the PC bit is still on from the previous scan and the sequence will move on before executing the instruction. In cases like this, it's sometimes required to use a short delay timer to give the instruction enough time to enable, reset all the status bits, and then complete its task before allowing the sequence to continue. Usually, a 100 millisecond delay is enough. For more detailed information about setting up specific instructions, you can watch our integrated motion instruction videos about the instruction you're using. There are links in the description below. Integrated motion programming is complex and takes time to get right. However, the information in this video is a good starting point to get you headed down the right path. If you like this video, please click the like button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when we post new videos. Thanks for watching.